<laughs> welcome back to the rest of the story and welcome back to the birds you know the weather must be turning around when the birds are starting to get loud I mean we had 40 degrees today which you can tell the lot around here has really started to melt off I mean that was solid ice clear up to the door here and basically it's just a big slush lot right now which I'm I'm better with that than having to worry about falling over so I um, had the gator out earlier and got stuck with it or got hung up with it I should say uh, with the, uh, the tires and everything it has on it between the tires the diff lock and the front wheel assist or the four-wheel drive and with the suspension on it when you do run it up and on the frame like I just did on a bunch of frozen snow and everything um, the tires do at least bite enough that it digs its way out or grinds its way out um, I was just looking at a project we're gonna have this spring um, for those of you that have been asking me which I've been getting questions in my email quite a bit so I'm trying to res respond to people but um, that galvanized tank down there is actually a portable fuel tank and everybody that is well for everybody that's been here for long enough or since the fall even has probably seen that we already have a portable fuel tank for the back of the truck for transporting diesel that holds about 109 gallons and basically even in the worst of days as of lately in the last couple years even if the combine and the tractors are low on fuel at least we can get enough between the combine and if we have to put a load on the either tractor there's at least enough in there to get us going for another day um, but typically it just goes in the combine um, especially like during harvest that usually is just for topping off the combine because it's not like the tractors use a whole lot for running the cart I mean I think we ran the 82 for like a week and a half without filling it up I mean if if you're smart about what you're doing you're not just burning fuel um, back to what I was saying though that tank down there as nice as it is we really don't need it for another diesel tank I mean if we uh, start running farther away from home and we actually need the extra fuel to throw another tank in the back of either the blue truck or my brother's truck whatever else I mean if the time comes I guess we can use it for that but seems how this machine likes to drink fuel I mean it it goes through fuel faster than I go through Mountain Dew and that, that's quite the statement so that holds approximately 100 gallons I think it's just a little above this thing will go through about 15 gallons a week give or take uh, depending on the time of the year and how much we're using it and to be completely honest we use this thing every single day when it's nice out and not even when it's nice out I was still running it up here up until like the first week of January it's just uh, with how much snow we got here for that month and a half uh, no matter how nice this thing is you can get too much snow and basically you're just pushing snow with the bumper kind of inefficient because then you're just kind of burning the motor up trying to dig and get through the field um, so the plan is to instead of getting a electric pump for it where we got to worry about where we set it or having an electrical outlet around for it or even having a electrical cord extension cord around uh, plug it in um, the plan is uh, dad was talking about uh, just getting a hand pump for it then getting gas delivered to it so that way we don't have to run to the gas station in a panic with these really inconvenient gas tanks which hold on okay I'm back uh, yeah uh, these gas tanks are a real pain but I mean when it's all you have to use and what really burns it through it is when we're using the lawnmower the gator and it's two or three four-wheelers depending on who we all have helping us um, spring cleanings well spring cleaning can't come soon enough all this will be cleaned out of here once again uh, the net wrap that's well it's nothing you're really going to avoid um, that'll all get cleaned up this spring take it out to the garbage 
the metal pile, that'll get cleaned up and shoved back against the wall. All those brake drums that are thoroughly shot. But the thing is, these things are so heavy. We found out that they make really nice uh, jack stands, um, especially when we were changing the tires out in the Bobcat. Uh, really handy for setting the Bobcat down on it. And you don't really have to worry about the skid steer sliding off them at all. So, well, they're here, you might as well use them. But um, as far as spring cleaning goes, all this has to get cleaned up. The bench will have to get cleaned up. The tractors are gonna have to get gone through. I was told the other day to keep our tractors cleaner. Do a better job of keeping our tractors clean and wash our windows and all that. Oh, uh, we do. Um, we keep the tractors clean pretty consistently in the summer. The only problem with getting the tractors clean and doing the windows every day, day in and day out in the winter, well, one of the reasons is you can hear them. The birds like to roost in the machine sheds a lot more in the winter. Plus the fact that the dust does start to uh, collect on the windows. I know my 76's windows are kind of dirty and messy. Um, yeah, I could clean it off and everything, but it would look just as bad in a few days to a week. So I just put up with it throughout the winter. If it gets too bad, I do clean the windows off. But um, when we start getting back into field work, everything will be cleaned up. The windows will be cleaned up. The cabs will be cleaned out. All the battery terminals have to be cleaned up. Uh, air filters, fuel, oil have to be checked or changed. Tires have to be checked. And we got to get the 4640 ready to rock and roll with RTK because we did go through and make the commitment to do an RTK globe update to that from the Terrastar. I've said it before and I'll probably say it at least a dozen more times going into planting and probably all the way until we're done with planting. But the Terrastar worked just fine. The problem I didn't like about Terrastar is that even though it was, I think it was less, it was accurate up to two inches or less than two inches as far as accuracy. I don't remember the exact numbers anymore. But um, the problem with it is it wasn't fixed based. So your, your guidance lines had a tendency to, to travel. The reason that was a problem is because out in Big Patch out here, it's a 25 acre field. I was planting soybeans in it last year. I made my two outside rounds and I set my guidance track, just my straight back and forth passes um, on the lower end of the field. And by the time I got halfway across the field, which in about 30 minutes, uh, my lines were tracking far enough where I was having to, to manually reposition on the, on the display. I had to manually, manually move them a uh, matter of feet just to keep my guidance lines where they should be in relation to my last pass. <laughs> Andrew, everybody, you know, some people like him, some people hate him, a lot of people really couldn't care less. Um, he's a really good salesman, but he's also really good at not feeding you a line of bullshit either. Um, he's really good at selling you on the stuff that will make you money. He's really good at not pushing the stuff that isn't going to make you any money. Uh, there's been a lot of additives, uh, like Quick Roots was one of them, um, fungicide, and stuff that I wanted to try on a, on a larger scale as opposed to just doing one or two passes with it. And he was really good at just making sure that, making the, making the point that to do more trials um, as opposed to doing half of the farm uh, with fungicide or additives or seed treatments or anything else like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. In the end, we decide what we are and aren't going to do around here. But he's a really good salesman when it comes to that Terra Star and the RTK because he let us use RTK two years ago. And it was a demo. So we went from using RTK to using Terrastar. Oh, let me correct that. The first year we got that corn planter, we had a John Deere monitor in it. We went from running WAS with row shutoffs, which left some pretty wicked gaps and everything at the end of our headlands because WAS is basically good just for doing tillage. Um, then we went from WAS to the Ag Leader monitor running RTK because it was on a demo, which was 
literally night and day difference, huge difference as far as the row shutoffs and everything. Um, went from that to Terrastar, which Terrastar is halfway to RTK, I guess is the best way to say it. And Terrastar worked. Um, the only things I didn't like about it is that we had our, our field lines already mapped out and the Terrastar, for whatever reason, we never really discussed why it did it, um, but the outside two rows were outside of my field boundaries when I would go through and make the first pass. After I made the first pass or the outside round, um, it, it worked fine. It did exactly how it was supposed to, but it was just, I think it was something to do with where we uh, we originally made the field boundaries with the RTK because we, we ran the boundaries of all of our fields with RTK and then going over and then using Terrastar to read those boundaries, I think affected that in some way, shape or form. I'm not sure as far as all the AMS stuff, you have to, it's really technical as far as understanding every little thing that can give you issues with it. It is what it is. All I know is I'm really excited to be running RTK this year, especially with the 4640 between chisel plowing and planting. We've tried it with cutting hay. We've used it, I've used it for um, raking hay. So I mean, there's a lot of uses for row guidance or for the RTK guidance with the on track it's <laughs> I always swore back in high school me and my friend Ryan we always said that that's not farming if you're if you're not driving the tractor well it is and it isn't because it allows you to run more acres more efficiently it makes you more money at the end of the day and you're not quite as tired so that makes a big difference or you can run more acres so thanks for watching Stay warm. I mean, I'm basically going without gloves, so it's not that bad out. So, Take care. Take it easy. Keep in touch. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. And now you know the rest of the story.